Today we are going to be talking about Thor Ragnarok, or Thragnarok as I like to call it, so stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. Everybody, I am here with Joel, spoiler alert, Cunningham. (laughs) Calling me out. (laughs) Calling me out. It's funny because of my tendency that we've recognized to spoil things and then explain that I'm, or then apologize for, for spoiling things. So I'm going to try and keep that in check. We're raining them in, folks. We're raining them trying in. Trying to rain me in. We got in trouble with one of our yeah. one of our viewers, <laughs> listeners, calling me out on those. I'm trying, folks. It's I'm trying to not spoil. It's a heat of the but, moment kind of thing. Yeah very, yeah, very much a heat of the moment. I am here with Matt. Something smells like a melty stick, hey? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I'm talking about. That's again a minor <laughs> spoiler potentially. No, uh, it's not. Not really. It's not a spoiler because it's out of context. You have no idea what you're. If you haven't seen Thragnarok, that yet. was one of the funniest scenes. Right. But I, okay, I don't want to spoil it though. The, the so, whole yeah. the whole movie was a funny scene. That so. is very true. So I figured, yeah, because we're going to be talking about Thor, we'll probably be doing like a bit of spoiler talk. Oh I'll yeah. Try and save it. We'll do we'll do a defined. Hey, we're going to talk about spoilers at a certain point in time, and then you can tune out if you haven't seen it. Yes. But. Uh, Joel, why don't you yeah. go ahead and tell people how they get connected with us? Okay. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, yeah. real quick, yeah. Synopsi. I'm going to fix my headphones while you're synopsi? doing that. Synopsi? Go ahead. Go ahead and do that. So Synopsi or synopsises, synopsis of what we do here, the real review, we're going to kind of give you a breakdown of uh, this movie, Thor Ragnarok, from both a critic and a uh, okay. more of a fan perspective. So Joel's the critic, the analytical, the slightly negative, mm-hmm. uh, non-fun person to be around where you have Thor. Huh? Just kidding. You have the person who likes the emotional. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you have the emotional. Think very highly of yourself the here, The emotional. Uh, the, I have a comment on that later. <laughs> okay. So the, uh, we have the, the more emotional fan-based side, which is me, myself, yeah. and uh, potentially unstable at times, but uh, I tend to get wrapped up in the fun of it all and so kind of overlook some things. You're saying I'm like a big burning fire and you're kind of more of like a mild little simber, like ember kind of burning. No, that's not the picture I got in my head, but whatever. <laughs> Again, spoilers. Anyways, so go ahead, Joel. Sure. Now break it down for everybody. Yeah, so we have some great ways to get connected to the podcast or the vidcast, however you'd like to check us out. Uh, we've got the website, which is realviewmedia.com. And then as always, we have our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash realreviewmedia. We'd love to get connected on either of those. Give us a like. And then additionally, we have our Twitter and Instagram, which are both at realreviewmedia. Love to get connected. And then, yeah, we'd love to hear thoughts, perspectives, input, you know, uh, whatever you think we're doing right, whatever you think we're doing wrong. Maybe some uh, ideas on shows that you would like us to check out for yeah. Tube Talk or something like that. Shoot us an email. It's realreviewmedia at gmail.com. Totally do it. There you go. Make it happen. It's happening. It's going to happen. Anyways, yeah. let's just do this thing, man. Let's talk about Thor Ragnarok. All right. Let's you get ready for it. this? Okay. Right, so be. <laughs> here is the synopsis of the film. In prison, the almighty Thor finds himself in a lethal gladiatorial contest against the Hulk, his former ally. Thor must fight for survival and race against time to prevent all powerful Hela from destroying his home and Asgardian civilization. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. And this is directed by Taika Waititi and, um, a New Zealander. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is awesome, by the way. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, so we have Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Kate Blanchett, Idris Elba, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, Carl Urban, Mark Ruffalo, Anthony Hopkins, Benedict <laughs> Cumberbatch, and Taika Waititi, uh, among others. But, um, man, I really like this movie, Joel. Okay, nice. I did. Really enjoyed this movie. It's good. Um, I would say, just an overall, uh, this has been one of the more fun Marvel movies that I've seen in the last... Mm-hmm couple of years yeah outside um, of probably guardians of the galaxy i would consider it one of the funnier right under under guardians and not um, not even just funnier probably but like, one and two but just like some fun stuff and like really cool action so let's just dive into the kind of what i thought about that first of all yeah. 
all of the main players in this movie, whether you're talking about Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie or uh, Korg, or if you're talking about Kate Blanchett, Chris Hemsworth, you know, whoever it may be, um, they're... Is it Kate Blanchett or Kate Blanchett? I know that sounds random, but... It's the same to me. Um, <laughs> it's all Blanchett to me. <laughs> I've heard it both ways. Yeah. Anyway, so I, um, I I thought everybody was really strong and I really liked everybody's characters. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially like the newcomers like Valkyrie, um, even the Hulk as the Hulk, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed. Um, but uh, <laughs> like Jeff Goldblum even. Jeff Goldblum's really funny in this. He does really well. I like his character, but he's basically just Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I've never seen Jeff Goldblum. I think outside of his his gold bloominess, <laughs> I think maybe the least the least I've seen him is probably the horror film, the couple horror films that I know he's done, like The Fly. Yeah, um, old and then school he did Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Old school Goldblum. Yeah, like the old school version of him. I, he was the least like oh oh yes oh yes. yes. Oh, he does oh, this yes. funny thing. Oh, I don't know oh, if you oh. notice this, but I, I forget the comedian that talks about it, where he'll like he'll like go down a thought. And then completely at the very end of it, divert. So he's like, "Oh, do I want a chicken? Do I want a, do I want a turkey? Do I want? Oh, wait, but I'm not hungry." Yeah. Like you know, and you're like, oh, "That's Jeff Goldblum for you." Um, yeah. But he was he. I was really concerned about him. Yeah. We were talked about this when they first uh, announced that he was going to be on the project. Yeah. I was actually really concerned about him. Um, but I was much happier after having seen what I did of him. Yeah. In the both the trailers and the stuff at Comic Con. Yeah, year. yeah. That's oh yeah, that's right. You got again. He got yeah. to go to Comic Con, and I did not get to experience that is. fun stuff. Yeah. Um, but my favorite new person was the character of Korg, mm-hmm. which is uh, played by director Taika Waititi. Yeah, um, who's a motion capture um, alien, I guess. It's a good way but, of putting it. Um, it's like a rock alien. Yeah. So, um, and that's not. Don't worry, guys. It's not spoiling anything. It's in the trailer. But the the big thing with that is this movie is it's really fun, and it's not. I was really concerned at first that it was going to be too jokey. There's a couple times I kind of felt this way in Guardians a little bit, but a couple times I was like, "Is this going to go this really jokey path?" But it it was able to rein it in a few times, and I was like, yeah. "Okay." I was like, okay, we're good, we're good. It got serious and needed to have those serious right. moments. I think that was the big differentiator with the humor here as compared to Guardians. This movie kind of just had moments of humor right. that were like kind of all throughout. Yeah. Whereas Guardians had the same thing, but it would happen even in those tense moments as a means right. to kind of break that tension. And it did it a bit so much to the point where you're kind of like, ah, I just you, wanted a tense moment. I didn't right. need a humor moment here. Yeah. I was okay with it. Mm-hmm. But I know you kind of had a bit more of an issue. I thought with it was that. a little bit too jokey. The Guardians too, by the way. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a little too jokey. Um, yeah. The Thor, though, I I really like this. There is, um, and I said this last Marvel movie we talked about, which was Homecoming, mm-hmm. and I was like, I I remember saying, hey, I like this movie because I was kind of grinning the whole time. You know, <laughs> I was grinning the whole time. It just made me I was like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, this movie, I was I was not just grinning the whole time. I was like chuckling and laughing out loud a number of times there's one there's one at the very end i don't know if i've ever laughed that loud as loud as i laughed uh, we'll talk about it in the spoiler section okay. but i i was like <laughs> it just it's so funny <laughs> this movie um if you're unfamiliar with uh taiko watiti's previous work he's known for this comedic flair and if you've watched his interviews he's he's a hilarious guy yeah and um he's got a good sense of humor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. in the sense that he likes to find humor in things yeah and he'll he'll like create scenes for like like with the humor in mind and the humor is never like attacked on like afterthought. Yeah. Um, so I, I appreciate him in that regard. But this movie is a lot of fun. In addition to it being a lot of fun, it has some really sweet action. The biggest thing that I took away from this movie, and I've told you this before, I didn't really was, care uh, for the Led first Zeppelin. two films. <laughs> right. I didn't care for the first two Thor films that much. And even Thor as an Avenger. Yeah. Like, like okay, Thor, you know, I've never really been a huge fan of his. I think this movie makes Thor cool. I've never thought as like... Like makes him awesome. Yeah, like I, we like, don't want to talk too much about why, but I, right. I, I think they changed his character. Yeah, so in the sense of what what they're trying to, his personality has has been updated. Right, I think not even just his personality, but like just kind of an update overall. Um, I, I think it makes him 
makes me excited to see him in future films. Right. Um, and I've never felt that way about anything related to Thor at all. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering as well if that was just the direction that Taika wanted to take with this film, if that's something that's going to be consistent moving through, because he's had an edge of sort of that style as he's moved towards it in the last like iterations of like yeah. Avengers, but he hasn't fully embraced it until I think this film for sure. And it was almost yeah. like, and this is in the trailers and everything, so I'm not spoiling anything here, but when they cut his hair, it was almost like this renaissance and yeah. of sorts for like Thor and Loki and yeah. this new push and they're they're taking his world in particular the Thor world into some very odd different types of environments and different types of characters and it, it was almost like Star Wars-esque where yeah. they're really taking you into the galaxy and experiencing all of the the quirks of the characters and the languages and the cultures of these different places. I know Guardians has gone there mm -hmm. but I don't know. It just it, it, it their films felt more about like the, the the cast of characters than really getting involved. This film was a, a huge aspect of this film was kind of the trash world yeah. that we're on almost yeah. the majority of the film. Mm -hmm. um, I will say I don't think I like this film as much as you. Okay, potentially it depends upon. <laughs> I don't know what. I, I, you, Hundred and nineteen percent, Joel. You know, again, <laughs> positive and you know more negative. I I tend to see this film as a necessary step. In moving toward or moving toward the Infinity War stuff sure. that's coming up, so it felt necessary and felt good, and I don't feel like I left the theater with a bad experience. Like I wasn't leaving going like, well, what was a waste of money or something. But at the same time, the big thing that, and we can't talk about too much of this until we get into spoiler talk. But I, I just, I was left kind of going like, well, what really? I mean, what significance? There, there was a things happened in the film that were significant, mm -hmm. but it never made me feel like they were significant while I was watching the film. I got gotcha. And maybe it's just the general sense of like, I'm getting over Marvel or like yeah, superhero maybe. films. I hope I not. Know. It's possible. I still enjoy them. I'm like super excited for Infinity War or yeah. Black Panther and stuff. But maybe, but yeah, but like when I left, I just felt like, yeah, it was kind of, it was fun. I mean, it was all right. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. There was aspects that were good, but like, I would say for one thing, tension was really not there for most of the fights. I mean, I kind of knew from end to beginning, it's like, okay, I know where this is going to end for the most part. Like, they're not going to kill that person. They're not going to kill that person. You know, that person's going to, you know, they're going to have the story of the hero fall and then the slow build rise up. And so, I, I don't know. I didn't see the twist coming at the end and we don't talk about it right now. But I, um, yeah, I was like, oh, that's cool. I, I see that. Um but it depends on the twist. I there was a couple twists that you could just a, be just a to. one. But I um I uh, I don't know. I I, I didn't even it. see anything as a twist to me. I felt like it yeah, all it's not of, really a twist. It's yeah. just a it's it's just a, a storytelling arc that I enjoyed. Okay. Um and I, I the one thing that I thought was really cool. Um, I did really like. Kate Blanchett's character. I thought she started off really strong, mm -hmm. and then the, her character. She was softened. Yeah. Yeah, in a weird way. Lost a little bit of her bite at the end in some type kind yeah, of it way. Yeah, like, like, I don't know. It felt like her bite, character, but... again, not getting into spoilers, but it felt like her character got bogged down in a lot of stuff that was happening mm -hmm. around her. Yeah. And because of that, it felt like her story got bogged down. Yeah. She had an end game goal and she was like pursuing that at the very beginning very heavily. And it was like, boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait a minute. Now we got to hold you yeah. up for the rest of the film. And I was like, Okay. Yeah. You know, I wanted to kind of see that move forward. I thought really what this film was going to be was Thor, you know, hijacked and thrown into another universe, another universe, another planet, another system. Realm or whatever. Realm. And then the whole movie, for the most part, was going to be about him being this guy trying to pursue getting out of there. Right. And, and it ended up being a huge chunk of that, but mm, it was a lot of jumping back and forth. Um, a lot of it, like her trying to do things and not necessarily accomplishing it. And it jumped out a lot more so than I thought. Mm. I don't know. It just jumped out of his, his perspective a lot more than I thought that it would. And I think the other thing for me is that as much as I did enjoy the overall humor, it wasn't really funny, funny. Mm -hmm. There was some moments where I definitely like laughed about it, but it wasn't like, I was like, you know, oh my gosh, that's so ridiculous. That's so funny. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, there was probably three or four moments where mm -hmm. I was really laughing. Yeah. Just kind of like, not just like a chuckle. There was a couple good chucklers. I think the funniest part was probably close to the middle, you know, uh, when Thor's kind of first into this new world. Yeah, and yeah, Kind yeah, of yeah. experiencing everything and the melty stick stuff, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, I thought that was probably the funniest part for me. I gotcha. So. Um, yeah, so... I. 
as far as far as like diving into some of the more negative aspects of it, mm-hmm. I I wanted it to have a little bit more. Uh, well, one being Kate Blanchett, kind yeah. of I felt like being weakened towards the end a little bit. Like I just a random thought. Yeah. Um, the other one being that I wanted there to be more tense moments yeah. I wanted to be a little bit more and like the stakes right. were there obviously there were stakes but right. they weren't the film wasn't played towards that that's kind of my point and yeah. that's what I was trying to say but I, I can't say specifically what or right. where without spoiling right, so right, we can right, talk right. about it in spoilers but the tenseness it just wasn't there for me and that's what I'm saying it felt almost like it was more of like we're just trying to get from this event to this event and set things up for the next series of right. films and that's why I'm like yeah I mean it was enjoyable the one thing, the other thing I would say really good with this film we haven't talked about was the cinematography. Oh, yeah. Some of the shot choices and the style that they they took, I was really excited and happy with. I mean, yeah. a lot of the Marvel films in the past have just been very kind of standard and flat and simple, whereas this one felt very much like bright, bold colors, yeah. very much like, you know, that the Ragnarok-like style that yeah. they've shown of like the... the um, I don't know what you call it, like the like eighties font, eighties font, yeah. and like bold disco esque yeah. type feel of like the Guardians of the Galaxy. I really liked that, and yeah. there was definitely some standout visuals. I think the trailer for this was amazing and mm-hmm. made me feel like they were going to go even further with that. Yeah, like I don't think this is going to be necessarily winning any awards for cinematography. But whereas I would say the old films were maybe like a B, this one was like more like a B plus A minus kind okay. of range for cinematography. Okay. Yeah. So I was happy with that, but uh, yeah. sorry to sidetrack. I wanted to get that in there as a positive before we kind of moved on. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I agree with that negative. I agree. I, I think overall other slight negatives for me was the humor. Okay. I, as much as it was good at times, there was just other times where it was like, eh, kind of. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go, keep talking though. I gotcha. I gotcha. You can keep No, going. that's 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 the biggest thing for me uh, was just I felt like I wanted there to be more the 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 stakes were there, but they didn't feel tense enough. So I didn't like, I didn't feel like, ah, uh, like what's gonna happen? Like there was a couple moments at the end. I was like, how are they gonna fix this? And then yeah, they fix it. And yeah. then, um, but but for the most part, that's that's it. I don't have a lot of a lot of other negatives. Okay. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed myself. It yeah, was, it was a good time. There was a they introduced you know a couple new characters. Yeah. Um, I think uh. The new, I'm guessing she's going to be sort of like the love interest that we have. I now got that vibe too from Valkyrie. But we'll see uh, Tessa's character. We'll see. As much as I liked her in the film, I also didn't feel like she had a very necessary story arc. Mm-hmm. You know, she kind of felt a little bit tacked on to me. The um, yeah, felt like they had some maybe some other scenes that they didn't put in the film that would have added to her. Yeah, arc. I wanted a bit. Because it goes back to that point of like the significance of the film. I wanted a bit more time to kind of live in the characters and live in the world and experience what it is that they were trying to overcome and and just give like a beat, a breath, give a moment of like contemplation, you know, where they have to like ponder something or make a tough decision. There was a bit of that at the end, close to the end, which I don't want to spoil um, with one of the characters that ends up being, you know, he has to make a significant decision, like what side he's going to kind of choose to be on. But, like, for her character, and I, I will kind of spoil this. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but... Well, well, I, well just hang on. I, yeah. I, just with her character in particular, it everything felt so just like, everything's just happening. Right. You know? And I, it kind of felt that same way with everybody. Okay. And everybody kind of, like, there was a couple minor moments where, like, there was a little bit of tension or a little bit of, like, oh, bad past or bad thing. But it was, like, so quickly, like, all right, moving on to the next thing. Um, so, yeah. And I would say the other thing with the humor... I know I'm I'm complaining a lot here, but we're, this is our complaint section. <laughs> in the sense. Yeah, so sorry. Um, the humor not only did it it wasn't that funny to me. I think the big thing was it was just very predictable at times. Oh yeah, like I was like, oh okay, that's about to happen. Oh, that happens. Okay, that's funny. You know, oh, they're gonna say some awkward line or they're gonna flub this or I could see it coming from like a mile away. Where whereas with Guardians. There was so many moments where that was like that. Yeah, but it was still funny. But there was a lot of moments where I had no idea. Like what? That I did not see that coming, and that was hilarious. So, yeah. oh man, yeah, I'm curious to see how our score is going to differ on this guy. Um, I guess what other another negatives? Anything else you can think of? No, that's really it. Okay, yeah. Do you want me to give my score first? Yeah, you go ahead. I am going to rate Thor Ragnarok Thragnarok <laughs> a 93. 
Okay. Yeah. I'm giving it an 85. Okay. Hey, so we did. That's not as big of a rift. I think we had a bigger rift with Homecoming. Probably for yeah. Homecoming. Yeah. That's or um or book because I didn't like I didn't like Homecoming. <laughs> I liked this film. Yeah. Okay. I really didn't okay. like Homecoming. The more I thought about it, maybe. I might even rank that one a little lower. Okay. So, but yeah. Yeah, time does that sometimes. It changes your perspective on it and it stuff. It does. Yeah, with age, you know, you yeah. you mature into your perspective. <laughs> Maybe that's a good way of putting it. But um, let's let's do this. We're going to get into spoilers here. And uh, if you have not seen Thor Ragnarok, go ahead and shut this off. Stop watching the cut. videos. Stop cut. listening. We're we're let's done with cut. the not with there the non spoiler. We're getting into the spoiler section. So if you listen past this point, it's just your fault at this point. So we're gonna start in mm-hmm. five, four, three, two, one. Spoilers. Thor dies. No, but Odin dies. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Odin because yeah. he actually does die. Yeah, know? Odin dies. He doesn't really even die. He kind of just. He's like a he like Yoda's out of there, like Force Ghosts out of there. That's and, a good way of putting yeah. it. You know, he just kind of floats into the wind. Yeah, and it's like, Mwah, you know, yeah. and the particles, and then, <laughs> you know, yeah, as with all like mentor type characters, yeah. they, they always make a re like whenever they die in the beginning of a film, they will always reappear somewhere right. throughout, like Yoda, you know, yeah. Obi Wan. Of course, he died at the end, but. They always make a reoccurring thing, and it was just funny yeah. to see him. He's like, "I am now in the, <laughs> this heavenly cloud place, which is actually Scotland, I guess." Yeah, um, yeah. the couple cliffs th- of Dover. I think that's what that was. Couple things. What I was mentioning earlier that I was laughing out loud, like I couldn't contain myself. Yeah, was when Mark Ruffalo was like, "All right, you're gonna get ready for this." He jumps out. He just like <laughs> lands on the. That bridge. was the funniest part, I think, of the whole movie, <laughs> <He> because. Just- <laughs> That was the thing about that is I knew that was going to happen. Like I knew, but it still, there was like a little bit of me that was like, well, he's probably just going to be like, ow, you know, but he was like out. Like, he like, it looked like his bones broke. Right. And like he yeah. Was dead. Like it was, it was funny when it hit because of the way it looked and I kind of giggled, but then and when the they dog. showed him and he's like dead and, and the, the dog's dog. like, I was like, wow, he's like dead. Like that was what was so funny about it to me. Oh my gosh. I was no, laughing he's not so hard. And yeah. it's like, I gotta be quiet. Cause I don't want to like ruin this for people next to me, but it was so funny. Yeah. I mean, that was probably the funnier part funniest part for me too what was it that you felt like twist wise it wasn't really a twist and I, it, I guess you're right it's not really a twist but it's more of like the story arc i liked yeah. how the opener of the movie was like this guy threatening you know ragnarok on yeah. asgard and like and then thor like stops him gotcha and then at the very end they're like all right you know what let's just let this dude like destroy asgard and that's the only way we can kill hella and i was like oh that's a cool way to tie it in full circle but yeah it's not really a twist gotcha it's more of yeah just a kind of a cool storytelling arc that i really that was cool um but uh other than that cameo matt yeah. damon that was that was probably the other part that I thought I was, like, was really is that funny. Matt Damon? That I will say though, that really took me out of the movie when Did that it? happened. It it just immediately I'm like, okay, Matt Damon, like, and because he's been embroiled in all that stuff happening, you know, with Weinstein and stuff. Excuse me, it just so took me out of the movie. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, it was funny, but it, you know, it yeah. It, you know what's funnier though what? is so Matt Damon was playing Loki. Yeah, but. Who who was playing Thor was Luke Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth's <laughs> older, not as chiseled His brother, slightly smudgier brother. I say smudgier in the nicest of ways, which was but, so hilarious. Yeah, and then Sam Neill was playing Odin. Yeah, and then um, and I, I you're, you're right, I totally forgot. Uh, Zach Levi was in it. His character right dies. very briefly. I didn't even see him. Supposedly yeah, he, he dies. He is listed in the credits here, but he uh, gets killed. Yeah. And it's because he got cast in DC property, and that's probably why they're like, you gotta go. Yeah, they just um, kill you off if you And then, do um, oh, what was the other? Oh, I really, I liked Stephen Strange in this. Uh, it seems like he's really gotten a grip of his powers. Like, he's yeah. gonna be formidable and somebody you want on your team when you go and fight Thanos in the future. Right, he's a big part of that Infinity War arc. Right, and I think so. I think he's going to be like the man right. like for a lot of that. Yeah. Um, what was it? Did you say that there was something that like made you angry or got you upset? I thought you said there was something in the beginning that got you angry. Mm, Maybe I'm mistaken. I thought there was something that you said that we were going to talk about. We've talked about a couple of them. I oh do. no! I was I was a little concerned at, up front. I uh-huh. thought maybe it was going to. That's where I thought I was going to get too jokey for okay. me, but I, yeah. I I liked it. I mean, I, it wasn't too much for me. So the one thing I want to talk circle back to a little bit is maybe the humor, but I also want to talk about Valkyrie character. Yeah. Oh yeah. I that's think a right, little that's bit. Right. So that was one thing I wanted to circle back to. It really felt like with her, they did a very poor job in the sense of making me connect with her. Mm-hmm. 
in a in a relatable fashion. Okay. I understood that, you know, everybody that around her had been attacked, but they never really made me see, not made me see, they never really helped me understand how she had been suffering so hard or so heavily, I should say, that it caused her to, what I'm guessing she did, just run away. Right. I see you that. Know? I see um, that. Because she did. She just ran away. Yeah. And she never has to really deal with that inner demon or that inner issue. And it kind of felt like that way with a lot of the characters. But I think she's the best example of it in the script. Right. Something happened prior to the film starting that kind of put her in this predicament, in this mm-hmm. situation. And just very quickly, it's dealt with. And then we move on to the next set of action. Yeah. The same thing with uh, Bruce. You know, we get a bit more of that backstory because of everything that's happened in Adventures. And we've seen that. But his... the Wait, impact. Bruce? Yeah, Bruce Banner. Sorry. Oh, whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, who's Bruce? Sorry, not Bruce oh, Wayne. Yeah. Bruce Banner, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like, yeah. Batman. I forgot. I was yeah. like, the Hulk. Okay. So, like, his story arc is that from the Avenger, from the Avengers film, he gets on that plane. Ultron, and, yeah. Yeah, Ultron, and just decides he's going to more or less let himself as Hulk. stay as Hulk because he can't get over his love interest aspect with Black Widow, which I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. But they, again, he just kind of, he he gets upset after he sees the video of Black Widow, he changes back and then he's just fine. Everything is like, okay, well, like he's freaked out for a little bit, but then eventually he just decides he's going to be Hulk again. And we never even really deal with that. And it's not even like a struggle. It's like, well, I guess I got to be Hulk again, so I'm going to do it. And then I it felt, just kind of happens. I've, I felt like there was a struggle. A it wasn't really, like, it was like he looked and then he thought, and then he was like, all right, okay, I'm going to be Bruce. It wasn't like he even really had to like overly think it. He just kind of, it just kind of hmm. happened. It felt like they just had certain things take place because they kind of wanted to put them into place and make them t- transpire. Huh. You know, I'm not saying in a, in a horrible way they did that. I'm just saying that like, as much as I would have wanted to see that, yeah. see that depth of character. I don't think Marvel has ever, in my opinion, been known for creating really deep characters. I think one of the deepest that they've ever gotten was probably Doctor Strange, where they spent that entire portion of the beginning of the film kind of showing you how he's this big-headed guy and then his kind of the break and he spent that. But that's mostly the first film, you yeah. know, the first film. But then ever since then, it, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I I've, I feel the same way that you do about uh, Valkyrie, which is interesting to me because they call her Valkyrie, but she's part of the Valkyrie. Right. Her name is Valkyrie, but she's also part of the Valkyrie, so maybe we just don't know her true name. Yeah, yet. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. um, other than that... Uh, but, I mean, even a good example of how... Sorry. No, you're fine. The way that they just were so offhanded with other things in the script, not just the characters, but the script in general. I mean, Thor loses an eye. Yeah. Literally loses an eye. Mm-hmm. And minus two or three offhanded joking comments, it's like not even that significant of a thing. I mean, normally in a film, if like a person like a major character gets their eye chopped out, like that's going to be a heavy weighted thing. But in this film, it's just like, oh, lost an eye. Oh, no, it's like his dad. Like, He's like, ah, oh, my dad could do it. I'm I gonna know, it. but that's just like, I feel like that's significant. Like, I that's, feel like it's going to come back or something. It's going to get fixed. Maybe, but it, I felt like it's a very significant thing for literally a portion of one of the main character's body appendages to just yeah. be lost. It's and like it's Nick just Fury, treated kind of as like a joke and... I know, but you don't, it's just, I don't know. It just felt very offhanded and very like I needed a, I needed a bit more weight to things like that. Like if he's going to lose an eye, like what is the significance? What's the repercussions of something like that? Instead of just having it happen. And half his vision, (laughs) Joel. So the heaviest weight that he had, like the most, the the weightiest parts of the film were two things. The Hulk. No. He's super weighty. One was, <laughs> one was when the city's being destroyed, and yeah. it's kind of like, oh, crud, like, look, the city's that being destroyed. That was a cool picture. Like, right, that was, was a cool, cool picture, scene. but that was like, the, and that lasted all of like, you know, 15 seconds or something like that. The actual destruction and of Asgard. And then maybe, I would say maybe when Odin dies. But even that is so like, done and moved on. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, he's dead now. What? Oh, it's your fault. I'm like, yeah. I need... I need some time to just have these characters be in an emotion, so be here, in a state, you here, know? I think this is the thing with this movie, is that this movie is basically made uh, from the vantage point of, hey, for the most part, you've already kind of been on a journey with a lot of these characters yeah. before, so we don't need to spend a lot of time doing, like, the developmental I stuff. I know, but, like... No, no, I, no, I'm not saying yeah. that's necessarily as an excuse. I'm yeah. saying I could see that being right. the thing, and that's probably one of the things that takes it away. It should make other things more significant. I go back to the eye thing, which is silly to do, but that, if you've been with Thor for as long as we have, 
the fact that he loses an eye should be an ex- significant aspect. You know, it's like when um, I felt it. I don't know. I, I felt I, significance lost. I was like, oh dang, he lost his eye. He also got stabbed in the back. But yeah, um, I don't know. I will say this. This is what made Thor cool again. This is what I was talking about. This yeah. made Thor cool. Was he was legit god of thunder? He doesn't have his hammer basically the I whole movie. I thought that movie. was great. Yeah, all that action stuff where he's like basically raiding for Mortal Kombat and yeah. he's just like <laughs> elect, you know lightning like all over the place. Raiding for Mortal Kombat. Who's that character from Big Trouble Little China? I forget who like rides the lightning bolts. Yeah, but yeah, I was like that was some really sweet action. I was like that is yeah. cool. <laughs> um, and I yeah, he just basically. I thought that was good. I thought that was a good story arc for him that he kind of had to overcome. I thought Thor. I think out of everybody, was probably the best story arc, yeah. which is important because he's, you know, the main character yeah. of Thor. <laughs> so he had a really good story arc there. It was just other other aspects like that. I mean, the other, oh, I would say the other kind of most significant moment was, um, I forget his name, Scourge, oh, uh, yeah. played by Carl Urban. He has to make that decision. We talked about this where he's going to either like, you know, save some people's lives. Oh, with lives. Des and Troy. Yeah, is he gonna is he gonna stand up for? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is he gonna stand up for the people from Asgard, or is he gonna kind of do his own thing? And he he decides that he's gonna do. That was like one of the weightiest moments of the whole film. I need more moments like that yeah. where he's kind of he's watching this guy die. It didn't necessarily need slow mo, but like he's thinking about it. He's watching these people die. He's pondering what he's done. He sees the kids screaming and crying, and he's like, "I need to do something." And then he could he busts out his two yeah. AKs, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty fun. But I just needed a bit more of that, and I think it would have elevated this film from that B range to more mm-hmm. of an A range for me. And then the last thing, which we talked a bit about, but I can give maybe a couple of specific examples now, was more the humor. Oh man. Okay. You know, some good examples were like I knew like when when Hulk threw the, like they made Thor into this kind of like somewhat bro like, stupid guy at times. And, like, when Hulk throws him that ball and he's like, oh, he's, he's going to throw it and, like, it's going to bounce right back in his face and hit him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and that happened. And then it was like, oh, ha, ha, very funny, you know? And, oh, they're going to shock him again because he's got a shocker on his thing. And yeah. it, it's like just predicting that humor and mm-hmm. seeing it coming made it not as quite as funny. There were still plenty of moments, like I said, that like the bridge landing scene was hilarious or yeah. non-landing, yeah. I guess you would call it. Basically, all it looks like all of his bones are broken when he lands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought that I thought that was really funny. I, Korg, for the most part, was fun. Um, oh, you're the new Doug. Oh, yeah. I like yeah, the last Doug's dead. You know, I tried to revolu- re- oh, oh, do a revolution. Oh, he's dead. I just felt bad, so I've been carrying him around the last several hours. <laughs> oh, look, he's not dead. Yeah, but like I tried to do a revolution, but only my mom and her boyfriend shows up, yeah. and I hate that guy. Like, just I thought that kind of stuff was funny because um, it was unexpected. Yeah, you know? it's Taika. You know, that's like him, like yeah. with his lines and stuff. So. I, I'm just improving. I liked it. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, but I mean, even yeah, I don't want to go too far into this. We could go into. I could go into examples with Idris Elba's character and how I felt like he was just kind of again there for being along the ride. This there is was, his best like role as that character. Like he has. It was the re- most weighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, there wasn't really any. Again, it was kind of like he at the beginning of the film. We find out he's just kind of missing. It felt very Lord of the Rings to me. Yeah. Um, I think. Maybe because I kind of blocked out the um, what is it the dark, not the movie, not the Dark Tower, I'm the the one the dark oh, Dark um, World, Dark World, yeah. Um, I'm thinking maybe that there's something that happened in that that I'm totally forgetting about yeah. with him, and that's why he's gone. I don't know. Yeah, but I liked him. I felt Lord of the Rings to me when he was like helping the people in the woods. I was like, oh, he's like you know Aragorn slicing people. But yeah, anyway. I, I think that's part of it. Maybe. I mean, the other film that I've seen Taika do that I, I didn't really like, not that I didn't like this film, but one of the films that I've seen that he did that I didn't really like was Eagle vs. Shark. And it had some semblances of of that humor to me that oh, okay. I didn't really enjoy. Maybe it's just his humor and style. Maybe okay. sometimes it, it, it doesn't just hit me quite the way that it, it's funny for me. It might be yeah. like a, a humor thing. No, I got you. Maybe I got issues, Matt. It's possible. Do I have, entirely mi- possible. Do I have issues? Lots of issues. Yeah. It's all good. But um, yeah, that's it. I really enjoyed it. I know you didn't like it as much and as I spoil- did. But... Talk, anything about the action? Did you want to talk about spoilery? No, the action was just the stuff that I really want to talk about. Was that Thor has lightning powers now? <laughs> like he doesn't need his hammer. Yeah, you know. I-, I wonder if he'll ever get that back because that's kind of iconic. You know, it is pretty iconic. I don't, I don't know. know. You can't really. He doesn't do... need it. I don't. Really... I guess he could carry on a lightning bolt or something like that. But um, maybe yeah. he just makes a new one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I thought the action was good. I mean, again, it's kind of like hella. 
shooting all the like blades out of her. She like, was hands. awesome. That was think, crazy. Yeah, she was awesome. I liked I liked a lot of the fights, although they were a bit like, okay, you know, he's just gonna. I would have liked it actually if he'd had a few more arena fights before Hulk. I think oh, it would have yeah, been yeah. fun if he kind of like had to work his way up to Hulk yeah. instead of going straight into challenging like the championship right, guy. Right. If he had to fight like a six arm like slob monster or something yeah. like that and been like, oh, you know, like that I could have enjoyed a little bit more. And I think that's the other part we were we talked about in the beginning of the review. I felt like a lot of the stuff that was on the planet, I wanted a bit more time to kind of get into that world of the planet. Yeah. Instead of just interacting with the characters that are interacting with things in the world. Like, give me that world. Give me the ah. culture of that world. Um, and it just felt like I only got a small little taste of it. Uh, gotcha. I so, gotcha. Yeah, well, I don't know if you felt that way. No, I just I I was I enjoyed myself and uh, had really <laughs> great moments of laughter and like the movie. spectacle action. I was like, that's cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the other movie. the The movie that just came out a little bit ago with Dane DeHaan, The City of a Thousand Planets, Valerian, Valerian, and City of a Thousand Planets. As much as that movie kind of stunk at times mm-hmm. because it was just ridiculously stupid. Yeah, the plot that movie did a good job of really getting you into the world's and the worlds that they, they travel to and the different places that they travel to. Right. This film, I don't feel like, did a great enough job really getting me into that world enough, you know? I gotcha. So that was just a minor, it's a minor gripe. That's another thing that probably would have taken this film into like an A-level. Oh, really? So, so, yeah. A-level. Well, hey, that's you got anything else like you want to add to the uh, spoilery section? No, I think I'm good. Cool. Well, guys, that is going to wrap up our review of Thor Ragnarok. Um, definitely curious, though, as to what you guys thought about it. If you guys got a chance to see it this past weekend, if you enjoyed it, uh, if you have thoughts on it, if you thought it was funny, too jokey, or uh, if you thought there wasn't enough action, or I don't know, um, <laughs> let me know either way. Let us know uh, kind of what your thoughts were. I'd be curious to hear hear your kind of opinion on that. And um, and then also remember you can connect with us on our social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram at real review media at our website, realreviewmedia.com, And then YouTube, youtube.com slash the real review and Facebook as well. But, um, yeah, definitely let us know what's up with that. And, um, we got uh, a couple of other shows coming up later this week, but yeah. Um, yeah. Any, anything else you want to add, Joel? Something smells like toast. Burnt yeah. toast. <laughs> the melty yeah. stick. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, the melty stick. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, nope, I'm good. Well, it's been real. It's been real. <laughs>